Peter Jackson's dead alive when there's a point that the the intestines are trying to chase this guy and like the intestines of somebody are zombified and it has like a little weird like it's colon that sort of has a face and that's what the monster from this movie basically is. No, you know what it is? It's some squid that I'm going to eat later cuz I'm starving. You're just like calamari. Me and the Japanese go. guy are going to eat that squid later. The whole movie her stomach is just growling like mm, you sure look it tasty. Like a, it looked like a flatworm. Yeah. yeah. Um, it looks like a cross between a flatworm and, a, and, a, and an octopus, and it's it's kind of like and Donald I Trump's don't know, soul. It's, it's the same kind of like that <laughs> that like soul. floaty squiddy thing has been kind of omnipresent in this like last like seventeen years of, of monster design. But this thing was really like an octopus. Like yes, it, in... it, it moved like in so many like it, it just it was an octopus. It was octopusy, yeah. wet, but with like octopusy flagellums and <laughs> well, when you see, wingish type things, when you flatwormy see, wings. When you see the the footage of like, you know, you're like, oh, it's an octopus, it's a thing with a big head and lots of legs, and then you see it like, you know, stuff itself into a fucking thimble. You're like, oh god, those things are, are really fucking agile. They can go through like a pinhole. But it's That's really what this is it's doing. really inappropriate for us to talk about Jake Gyllenhaal this way. Oh, <laughs> he does have a big head, and, and, and he's an invertebrate. <laughs> Noggin. <laughs> it's just huge. But he's so cute. Uh, this is the movie Life, uh, directed by Daniel Espinoza, who, uh, I guess he's from Denmark, so nobody here knows who he is. Espinoza? Um, he did uh, Easy Money, which is a pretty solid little foreign film known as a Snabba Cash over there, but it, it is accessible. It's even on Netflix for a while. Yeah, he also did Child 44. Child 44, which I don't know if I watched. You probably should have. Should I have? Yeah, it's not. Uh, mine, fair enough. Here, uh, this is a crew of uh, famous pretty people in space. Jake, <laughs> Jake Gyllenhaal, Rebecca Ferguson, Ryan Reynolds. In order of prettiness. Yeah. Hiroyuki, Hiroyuki <laughs> Sanada. Hiroyuki Sanada. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ariane Bakar and Olga. Da- I am not even going to try that. Uh, uh, diarrhea. <laughs> now, come on. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Russian. <laughs> Russian lady. What? Did you get it, Bo? Yeah. Daivotsnaya. Oh, oh, yeah. Bo got oh, it. Yeah, of course he did. What? <laughs> I like pronouncing weird things. Yeah, go back for your Shibletal work. What led you for? Go Fuck back off. and work for Trump, Rusky. Uh, <laughs> Columbia Pictures. Uh, <laughs> that's, I, I, this is like my greatest nightmare right now. I'm having an invasion of the body snatchers moment. Uh, anyway, so they're all on the International Space Station. It's the nearish, very nearish future. Yes. Like, you like know. next year. Yeah, we go. <laughs> No, it's 20 it's, years, it's, 30 years. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 but no. How did he remember? They, they reference Americans being involved in a war in Syria. So it was obviously last year. Yeah. <laughs> but they could have happened way beforehand. I don't know. Anyway, it, it's not they've like. Got, they've got holograms on the on the ISS. And apparently someone along the way decided they all needed a, a room full of sleeping chambers, which makes no sense. Yeah, well, you know, Where do they mean, sleep? Yeah. Yeah, but you can sleep anywhere in the ISS. You just need, like, a bag. It's, you need to be strapped in, though. Yeah, strapped yeah. in. But those you are know, cooler looking. You don't, yeah, you don't need, like, pods. But you don't I need a pod. Need Everyone pod. needs a pod. I, I know yeah, you need a pod. The only reason they don't, they don't send pods up or anything along those lines is that they take up space. Take up space, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 but there's so, so much space, space in space. Space in the rockets. <laughs> <laughs> They're, like, they're, you know, you're, you're talking about shifting something bulky up, and the, yeah, I said, the, this version of the ISS is clearly uh, a long way along. It's yes. a much larger ISS. Much larger. Uh, it's been up for a while, as they established. There are like s- several cycles of people who have already gone through this. They established Jake Gyllenhaal has just broken the record recently for being the longest guy mm-hmm. ever continuously. Yeah, he's been space. up there for But he's years. not that yeah. long. He's what? No, <laughs> no, that's Jake Long. Right? <laughs> uh, uh, yes. And but apparently the to- toilets haven't changed. Yeah, They're toilets. No, nope. exactly there's the really about as good as space toilets are going to get. Like my toilet point. at home. Until they figure out the whole zero <laughs> g a, a thing. That toilet. is the big problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the poop is going to touch your butt. There's just nothing for no, it. No, 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 it's, it's not that. It's that the gravity actually helps it leave your butt. Uh, ah. Yeah, I see. So but really where do they... Did you discover from the, from the closing credits of the Man on a Mission documentary? <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to know that. Well, I knew there's a reason I didn't see it. I didn't know gravity helped you poop. And this, yeah. Isn't that the movie that your boss was in? Oh, yeah. I was going to say, let me just ask my boss tomorrow how what, accurate this movie is. What was is. it like? How hard did you have to strain to poop, boss? <laughs> but that's like... <laughs> there was length. 
within the closing credits of the documentary. It's disturbing. But Bob's Burgers just did an episode about that where they have like a lady astronaut and every question is, how do you poop in space? How do you pee in space? How do you poop in space? How do you pee in space? I feel, still feel like I don't really know though. Well, um, but this movie is more about the the important Pooping. question: How do you fight gelatinous monsters? Exactly. Uh, here they've like gone through a lot of trouble after a the sad, uh, uh, a Mars lander mission. on a Mars mission grabbed samples. It got knocked off course. They've gone to a lot of trouble to go out and grab it dangerously, and they get it. Yay! Everybody celebrate! Yay! End of movie. Yeah, end Which of should, movie. It's another thing that this is kind of an eyebrow raiser because I was like, why is Ryan Reynolds taking a spacewalk to do the the, the automatic? I'm not even sure thing. why he was out there. At yeah, all. They, yeah, they they didn't really do a good job of sewing no. that up why he had to be out there, but it certainly looked heroic. It gave him a heroic moment. Yes, and, and it's Ryan Reynolds. That's what he does. It was in the script. Where's my heroic moment? It's true. <laughs> if only he could have had more wisecracks. <laughs> um, so they get the samples back, only to find that yes, they've done found the elusive life. Uh, uh, a um, single-celled organism that they that is not only but it's in suspended animation. You know, they're like, well, it's not dead, but we can't figure out how to bring it back to life. They bring it back to life. Yay! It's Yay! Supposed, with have, sugar, but yeah, with sugar with glucose. That's we, how I become. <laughs> I know. Me too. In alive. the morning, that's yeah. the only thing that gets me not to be a unicellular organism. <laughs> um, and they're like, okay, this is amazing, right? Because it's first proof that there is life outside of Earth. There's something else. Problem. What that it, thing is horrible. The, the, the problem isn't getting it to be alive. Of the problem course. is getting it to stop being bigger and stop being more alive. Killing or, and yeah, it's and strangling it keeps no. getting bigger and uh, bigger. Oddly enough, aliens act just like we've been acting towards planet Earth. <laughs> uh, and at first, it's just like, hey, you want to be friends? Oh, I like how it like reaches out for a hug. Yeah, but yes. they, they make the problem of overstimulating it, and then it's like, oh, is that how it's going? That's like be? children. And then the next thing you know. There's weird flagellumish alien flying around the ship and everybody's running and screaming and yes. Well, they're floating and floating screaming. And floating and screaming. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and the other problem being this thing isn't just some dumb thing. Somehow it's also pretty intelligent and it just wants to survive. Its body is basically one combination like mouth, muscle, and sensory organ and brain. Yeah. All it, in one. It's a multitasker. And as it gets bigger, it gets uglier. And smarter. Like me. Like, well, <laughs> let's not go that far. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll go ahead and say it. It's fine. It's fine. It's true. We we all know it. Anyway, um, I, I think, like, this movie, which uh, runs at a relatively tight 103 minutes, is definitely, to some extent, cribbing from Alien. I mean, oh, you can't yeah, no. oh, say that. Yeah, yeah the, the, it, it's not note for note, but the, no. the, co the concept is completely the same. It's It's... Let's do let's do the haunted house in space. Yeah, the the main conceit difference seems to me the being a um, this definitely feels more like an ensemble piece every, but than Alien did, which focused much tighter in some ways but from the halfway point on on Sigourney Weaver's character. Yeah, I, thought, I wouldn't go that I far. Thought, yeah, I no. think you have to you go need to rewatch Alien again. Yeah, but yeah. Um, uh, it's also like this turning around the major issue, going okay, it's not enough to survive. That's secondary to the fact we need to make sure this thing doesn't land on Earth. Yes. Because yeah. if it does, then Sony can go ahead with their Venom spinoff movie of Spider-Man. <laughs> Nobody wants that. No. <laughs> no. Nobody wants that. It still could be what's happening here is I'm all I'm No, saying. it's not. It no, could be what's no, happening. It's not. It could be. <laughs> put, put down the keyboard, step away from Reddit. I'm saying it could be. Sorry, Geeky. <laughs> They saw Cloverfield, 10 Cloverfield Lane, and said, we could do that. Oh, shit, we forgot to put something in the movie that that, that actually says that's what we were doing. Step <laughs> away, crackhead. <laughs> I'm just saying. We're okay. Hey, I still haven't seen that movie. What? So no spoilers. 10 Cloverfield Lane? Yeah. It involves Cloverfield. Yes. Oh. <laughs> there are monsters in it. Um, Maybe. I mean, I, I think I liked this a good deal. I don't think I liked it quite as much uh, as, as some a lot of people I heard talking about. It, it was scary. For sure, it does have some really scary points. I thought the effects are very well done. The creature itself is is ooky <laughs> and cool. Ooh, it's all slimy. Uh, you know, I guess I liked best that aspect of the whole like we need to make sure that this never gets to Earth part of it than I did yes. even more the just we need to survive this thing, which is which is built into the plot all the way through. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the one of the things I really liked about it is the plot is actually from that point of view quite understated. You know, they're doing their job. They've been up there long enough, they don't have to explain it to anybody. And that's probably where it's closest to Alien, is that truckers in space don't need to explain to you how a gearbox works. True. So when you have um, a, a bunch of scientists going, 
okay, how do we stop this thing mm. from getting getting to Earth? They already have the protocols in place. Yes, that's yeah. that's and one thing. Constant use of the term firewall. It's like, yeah. what do we do when when this firewall? That's comes? one thing I really okay, liked about this movie thing. because I was really scared that it was going to do the same thing that Prometheus did, which is have scientists, quote unquote, acting really fucking stupid yeah. when it well, comes they, to xenomorphs. Well, they clearly and did. Yeah, they, they, they said, did not do that. Okay, let's watch Prometheus. Every stupid thing they do is what we avoid doing here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is a much sharper script. It, uh, and, I mean, one thing that you really have to say about it you know, is the cinematography is extraordinary. Uh, we are in the age of the post-gravity science fiction film. I think that has set a level that if you want to be taken seriously, you have to reach. And this applies that same sense of design and ethos um, and what a contemporary hard SF space film will look like and applies it to the horror sci-fi genre. The first four shots are all amazing in completely different ways. Um, I mean, there's one that is just, you know, the first is just this gorgeous long shot composition. Yeah, going through the whole ship and Then you have this one, which is like an amazing, it, it was, you know, straight from Tarkovsky in its, in its ambiguity. And then, no, that, the, that's the, the fourth shot is the 10 minute long single take. This is this is a masterpiece when it comes when it comes to laying out how how to put together something that is visually striking. Estab- and it carries that all the way through. It uses I'm that really to establish the space, so yeah. we really understand the space these people are in, how it works, how it locks together, the way the rooms connect. It does a great job of doing that while also making you feel kind of isolated and and like hyper aware of the fact. Mm-hmm. Fuck, that's Earth all the way down there. Yep. Shit. Yes, there right. there was definitely so there's um I can't remember the expression, but there's a term that. Apparently, only people who have ever been to space can understand. It's the feeling of looking down or looking at Earth, because there is no down, from space. Mm -hmm. And you get a little bit of a sense of that um, during a couple scenes. And I think the the real or the real-ish aspects of this movie are great. My biggest complaint was the creature effects, the special effects, the CGI on the creature it just wasn't doing anything for me. It was icky, but it looked too much like an octopus. It wasn't scary. You're not scared I of wish- octopus? I love octopi. They kind of scare me. Octopoo. Especially when I <laughs> how smart they are. I'm like, fuck those. Yeah, guys. they're smart, but, but <laughs> I think they should have taken a note from Alien, which is don't show the creature. Keep it hidden. Keep it away from, from our, our, like... You know, we look at it and we see a creature that could exist on Earth. I want my imagination to run wild. So, I think going through it, looking at it as a, hey, this is definitely a possible future, was great. But the horror aspect wasn't there for me. You didn't find it scary? I found it, uh, I was very nervous Mm. throughout it, but I wasn't scared. Okay. I yeah. mean, like, I, I definitely, I mean, just the, the sheer amount of horror I've watched over the years takes a lot for me to even so much as jump. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, I think in general, a film rarely do I even feel really nervous during a horror it, film. It's and a very... Kept it's that a, going. It's a very suspenseful <laughs> film. Yeah. And I I definitely think, like, I thought there there was, you know, at least two moments at the end that were very horrific. I mean, strictly from the word. Uh, but I do agree that... I, I, I thought the character design was weak just because it's not something that I haven't seen before. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm waiting... For you know, the, like monster design needs to needs to pick it up. There, there there needs to be a paradigm shift because nothing has been really new for the last you know ten years or so. And I I, I need something a little bit more interesting. If you're going to spend that much time showing me the thing, yeah, yeah. It, I was okay with that because you know it felt more real. Uh, if you'd have put something like uh, the xenomorph in there. Then that comes with a particular. I'm not ethos, necessarily where, saying that it, either. Looking I'm, at here I'm saying is, is something you go. This is plausible, and, and that's part of it, of why it's, you it's know, supposed to work. I, I think you can do that and still do something new. It it just requires a really good designer. I wonder if they asked, you know, biologists like what would a sure. a, a life form with such and such properties look like, and that's what they kind of came up with because I think they. I mean, from my total layman's point of view, stayed true to the science of it. Um, And I I wonder if they were trying to stay true to that. And because we're so used to, like, giant, crazy Cloverfield monsters and that kind of thing, 
were not really impressed by quote unquote real life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was just ready to go. They go, so what would this look like? And they shrugged and directors looked at each other and said, A blob. Octopus. 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 <laughs> it's definitely yeah. an octopus. I read that article online where it said octopuses are aliens. I was kind of surprised at points when they could have switched over to practical and I thought it would have been more effective, mm-hmm. especially when the thing's actually wrapping around some of them that they didn't choose to do that because those are the moments it seemed most clear that you're looking at a CG creation and not a th- not like, you know, a, a, a physical thing. But when it's flying around the ship, it looks great, I thought. The mm-hmm. more detail we see of this thing, the better I like it. Because at those moments, they were like, okay, now we have to go all out and really render this thing well. And it looks really cool. The bigger it gets, the cooler looking it gets as it continues to evolve more details. And it does ask the question, how far would this thing go? There's a point in the film where it sure. almost looks like it's trying to ape a human face yes. in some degree. Yes. You're not, it nev- never really I gets like to the point where it's where yeah. we're sure... I, I wouldn't, I, and I want to go go out of my way to just stress that the you know there there wasn't anything that that you know I I hated about the design. Mm-hmm. I just didn't find it particularly impressive. Either. Right, it wasn't silly. We didn't yeah. laugh at it. It was just not you know not surprising. Well, Sarah, keep going to your final thoughts. Um, I think this is a great uh, hard science fiction piece. I think it's something that. Uh, we might look back on in, you know, like 20 years and be like, oh, this, this is technology from like five years ago or something like that. Um, it's a very nerve wracking movie for sure. Um, and there's a lot of closing doors. So <laughs> That's true. There's a lot of scenes of doors closing. If I ever become an astronaut, the first thing I'm going to practice is closing doors. Because that's going to be very important. Closing doors quickly. Yeah, closing doors quickly. And um, I'm definitely, like, I was definitely watching this and thinking, I'm going to talk to the one person I know who's been to the International Space Station about this and see what he thinks. Um, I think it's a, it's an enjoyable film, um, especially if you like science fiction. Some parts are a little slow. Uh, the beginning might be a little slow if you're, you know used to something a little splashier, but um, I'm going to give it 7 out of 10 um, limbs that don't work, so you go to space. <laughs> Bo? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, this has been a really good year, you know, good couple of years for, for hard sci-fi, and I, I think this is a, a good addition to uh, the uh, the canon. It, it's it, like, I, like you pointed out, it, it is kind of, it, it's 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 a cover song at best, but it's a really good cover song. Sometimes you you you, you hear one that, that you like just as much as the original. Um, you know, I wouldn't put this up in Aliens League, but or Alien apostrophe S League. Uh, but uh, I I did enjoy it. I, I thought the 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 scare factor was was fine. Uh, you know, it, it there were a couple of moments that that put me to the edge of my seat. You know, there there were a few moments at the uh, at the towards the end where I, I felt some of the camera work got a little ter- too herky jerky, uh, but you know that, that's not really that big of a complaint. I, I like the actors, I like the cast. I thought the, the you know the story the, they did a good job in making a, a story I I kind of knew and and there weren't any surprises in this, but they 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 did a good job of, of making me uh, uh, see it again, of making me enjoy seeing it again. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna give this. Uh, I'd say uh, eight and a half out of ten uh, uh, rolls of of duct tape. Richard, uh, I thought this was a wonderfully bleak but wonderfully intelligent uh, piece of sci-fi that, that for me worked, just worked consistently. Um, I I thought it did beautiful work of making you realize why each of these characters would be there, and sometimes you you watch a film and you go why would you even be there like you are clearly either ill qualified or don't want to be there you are the shaggy of this and nobody is offering you enough scooby snacks and everybody has good reason to be there <laughs> and the camaraderie between them and why that why that collapses why what they do why they do what they do um and i always feel the character should drive uh, plot and that does it this does it extraordinarily well um the alien is not uh <sighs> It, there's nothing magical about it. It's very pra- practical. It's very pragmatic. 
it's doing what it does it has its own motivation as well which I think you know is, is there's no point where you go why is any of this happening it all happens for an absolute reason leading to one of my favourite endings of the year uh, I really like the resolution I mean there's a lot of people who are going to be upset at it because of what it does yeah. not how it gets there and I think that that that's a better payoff um, I think this is you know a great addition to the genre uh, I think it's uh, one of the pieces I think will be looked at more and more over the year particularly because it, it does it, the, the trailers have made it look like a shitty piece of, of space sci-fi rom sure and in fact it is a lot more than that I think it's been desperately unsold to the audience um, for me this is a uh, 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 definite um, eight and a half um rapidly falling uh, atmospheric pressures you know like this thing doesn't exactly it's not reinventing the wheel this movie it's taking the wheel and figuring out all the minor little wonky problems with it regular that regularly pop up with the wheel and fixing them and tightening the bolts and going okay now this is how you do the wheel probably about as good as you're going to do it without adding any extra frills it's it's a very simple take on this type of like like haunted house in space type story um like the alien type tale but it all works there's very little that they didn't think about very deeply clearly and trying to make sure that like they have everything covered both in just the telling a story and making sure there aren't any ridiculous science holes or plot holes everything really ties together really well shut your science hole <laughs> okay <laughs> um uh, but that being said i still uh, until the end was still kind of like okay this is going exactly where i expect it to all the way through it's not really it's doing everything what it does very well but it's not really doing anything that surprises me once again until the end which i was actually quite impressed with i was like oh yeah, that was too. a ballsy move i uh, really liked it and the, the, as richard said earlier this is definitely one of the bleaker films you were going to see probably this year which is my definition of field <laughs> well, exactly. d- d- yeah it depends on what you feel about humanity Indeed. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but I, I did definitely enjoy this. I feel like I more enjoyed this on a sort of like intellectual way than I did an emotionally resonant mm-hmm. way. Like I wasn't totally connecting with it, but the whole time I was appreciating it going, oh, that was a good decision. Oh, that was well done. You know, uh, I, it didn't quite get me as much as the characters that give them enough detail. They're very clear about why everyone is there. I still never really felt connected to any of them either it was never that point i was like really concerned what was going to happen for them that's because you're not pretty enough uh, probably not <laughs> it's stupid pretty people i hate them all <laughs> pretty people uh, in space but i did really like this i'm gonna give it seven and a half out of ten times i thought to myself while this was going on i'd watch a deadpool in space movie i was thinking the same thing. <laughs> right yeah. you couldn't help it yeah yeah 